how about learning some simple podcasting tips that works but are slightly deviating and a little unconventional but are battle tested this episode is all about the podcasting lessons that i learned in the year 2022 with all of the experiments that i did in my podcasting journey Welcome to another episode of TPU TV. This is Dilip, and if you don't know me, then I'm a podcaster, an affiliate marketer, and a blogger. I run the podcast, the Podcasting University, where I share a lot of podcasting tips that you can use to get started with your own podcast. And on this channel, I share a lot of these practical and implementable tips about getting started with your own podcast. So if you're new here, then you might want to subscribe to this channel here, and don't forget to press the bell notification. so that you stay updated with all of the latest episodes that i release now this is going to be the last video for the year 2022 and i thought why not use this opportunity to do a quick recap of everything that happened in the last one year and all of the lessons that i learned in fact the podcasting lessons that i learned through the journey during 2022 now i released about 46 episodes for the podcasting university and about 72 episodes for some of the other podcasts and there were a lot of things that i experimented during the year which helped me learn a lot of these things and while a lot of this information that is available online is pretty cliche you'll be able to find a lot of this information on blog posts on videos on podcasts but most of that is cliche the information that i'm sharing today on this video is all battle tested something that i experimented and learned across the last one year So if you want to get started with your own podcast then these tips are going to be extremely handy for you so that you start off on the right note in 2023. So let's get started. Now the first one I switched from a bi-weekly frequency to a weekly frequency. There was a lot of learning that I had when I did that switch. Now I changed this frequency somewhere around mid of February and it had a lot of impact on the show. The primary three benefits was one in terms of the growth When I switched to a weekly frequency I saw that the show grew much faster because I was generating a lot more content for my listeners the listeners were able to get a lot more content they were able to engage with me more and I was appearing in front of them more frequently so that in a way helped in the growth of the show which helped the show grow almost about 800% in the last uh, one year So what I found was that the bi-weekly frequency isn't something that was really working for my show but the weekly frequency really really helped me grow my show much faster. So if you are looking at the ideal frequency for your show then the weekly frequency is something that you should go with. If you can do a daily show then nothing like it but that is going to be extremely hectic and you have to commit a lot in terms of your resources which can be difficult for a lot of people so a weekly frequency is the best and the optimal one to ensure that your show is growing and at the same time you are getting a lot of face time with your audience and considering the amount of podcasts that are out there and the amount of podcasts that are being released every week i think it makes sense for you to appear in front of your audience a little more frequently so look at a weekly frequency if you are looking at an ideal frequency for your show number 2 personal development now when i switched over to a weekly frequency i was creating a lot more content and that meant that i was researching a lot i was reading a lot i was listening to a lot of podcasts so overall when i look at my personal development i found that when i switched over to the weekly frequency i was able to grow many fold in this one year and i think that's one of the added benefit that comes with switching over to a a uh, weekly frequency or maybe a daily frequency but like what i said weekly frequency is the ideal frequency for any show for that matter so that is something that you should look at number 3 was the amount of content that i was generating considering that i was generating a lot more content in comparison to when i was doing a bi weekly frequency i had a lot of content repository that i could repurpose and use on all of my social media channels and if you are promoting your show on social media channels then you know that you need a lot of content that you might want to continuously post on social media in order to stay in front of your audience engage with your audience and grow your podcast 
So when I was doing a weekly frequency, I got a lot more content which I was then able to repurpose in terms of smaller snippets. I was able to break that down into smaller pieces of content that I could then use on social media. So that way I was generating a lot more content and it helped me with my promotions on social media. Now the obvious downside to switching over to a weekly frequency means that you need to commit more in comparison to a bi-weekly frequency. You have to have more content ideas and if you don't have a content plan for your podcast then it is going to be extremely difficult for you to manage all of the content that you will have to generate if you are switching to a bi-weekly frequency and you might just burn yourself out. So tread that cautiously but I would still say that if you are able to put together a decent content plan for your podcast then weekly frequency is the one to go. Number two usage of social media. Now I spent a lot of time on social media in 2022. I spent a lot of time on Instagram primarily and spent some time on Pinterest and Twitter but Facebook was completely out of focus for me and what I found was that Instagram isn't a place that can help you grow your podcast. Instagram is a place where you can engage with your audience, you will be able to research your guests, get guests on your show. You can do all of that on Instagram but if you're looking at growing your audience on Instagram then I don't think that is a place where it will happen. So focus more on Instagram primarily to engage with your existing audience but if you're looking at growing your audience I think Pinterest is a place where which can help you though idea pins are the focus on Pinterest static pins also work pretty well and you'll be able to divert all of that traffic to your website or to your podcast. So that is something that you can always do and Twitter is something that I have started trying out and it has also helped me but keep in mind that Twitter is not going to help you directly grow your podcast. What you will have to do is you will have to divert all of that traffic to an opt-in page, build your email list and then keep sending emails to that email list which can then be diverted to your podcast episodes. So that is something that you might want to keep in mind if you are using uh, Twitter. My focus for 2023 is going to be Twitter and LinkedIn and I'm going to spend much lesser time on Instagram. But like what I said, whatever is the social media channel that you pick, ensure that you have a strategy for that specific social media channel. And channels like that of Instagram isn't going to help you a lot in terms of growing your audience unless they make changes to how Instagram overall works. For Twitter, I had used a tool called as Zlapo which helps me schedule all of the content on Twitter. And if you're on Twitter, then keep in mind that Twitter threads are of extreme value on Twitter. All that you need to do is just repurpose your podcast episodes as threads and publish on Twitter. And if you're able to publish Twitter threads regularly, then you'll be able to gain a lot of traction on Twitter. And Zlapo basically helps me do that. It's a pretty simple tool. I link to the tool in the description box below. You can go and check it out. But use a good scheduling tool like that of Zlapo if at all you are serious about Twitter. Another thing that I tried out in 2022 was YouTube Shorts. So all of the Instagram Reels that I was creating, what I did is I repurposed that for YouTube Shorts and that helped me a lot. I think YouTube Shorts is something that you should include in your podcasting strategy because YouTube Shorts can help you drive a lot of traffic to your podcast and if you have a YouTube channel, then it is going to do wonders for uh, growing your YouTube channel as well. So YouTube Shorts is something that you should be considering in your strategy. So three things that I learned from using social media in 2022. One is ensure that you have a specific strategy for each of these social media channels. Instagram isn't something that you can use to grow your podcast. Use it to engage with your audience. But you can use Twitter, LinkedIn and Pinterest to grow your podcast. Ensure that you are using YouTube's Shorts. YouTube has to be part of your overall podcasting strategy for 2023 and don't spend a lot of time creating new content for social media. Repurpose all of the long form content that you're creating. It could be show notes, blog posts, podcasts, whatever it is. Repurpose that and use that for your social media channels. Number three, interviews versus solo episodes. Now in 2022, I focused a lot on solo episodes and one of the primary reasons why I did that is because I wanted to build a lot of repository in terms of knowledge because My show was all about starting a podcast or helping somebody start a podcast. So I wanted a lot of content repository and it made sense for me to do a lot of solo episodes where I was sharing a lot of tips and tricks in terms of getting started with your podcast. So my focus on interviews was pretty low and my focus was primarily on solo episodes. 
Now, there were some things that I learned when I did that switch from uh, interviews to solo episodes. Number one was that solo episodes are extremely powerful. Even if it is a 10 minute episode, it can generate a lot of engagement and listenership if you pack a lot of value into it. So if you aren't somebody who is too inclined in terms of doing interviews, then go for solo episodes, release content that is valuable even if it is 10 minutes, you'll be able to generate a lot of traction on the content and you'll be able to generate a lot of listenership. Number two, interviews need a lot of time. You need to commit a lot of time if you're planning to do a lot of interviews. So it is better if you plan your interviews in batches and organize it in such a way that you're doing a set of interviews maybe in one week and then releasing it uh, across the next few weeks. So since it takes a lot of time, it makes sense to plan it out and batch it. If you're not able to do that and if you're not able to commit so much of time on interviews, then please go to solo episode route. Services like Podmatch actually help you find your guests, but I still prefer doing my research on social media, which is something that I would recommend because that gives you a real time view of what your guest is doing, what are the kind of content that they are sharing, how valuable their content is and things like that. So I would recommend using social media to do all of your guest research in comparison to using some of these other services. But services like Podmatch can help you find a lot of guests. Number four, I switched to a premium paid podcast hosting in the middle of the year. Now I was hosting my podcast with Hubhopper, which is a free platform. And I recommend Hubhopper to anybody who wants to get started with their podcast and is looking for a free podcast host. But I had my reasons to switch over to a premium podcast host. And I did that towards the beginning of the year. And what I did is I first switched over to Spreaker. Now, while the migration was pretty easy, there wasn't a lot of problems. But after the migration, I faced a lot of problems. Their customer support was not responsive. They had extremely bad customer support. Some of their uh, features that were included were pretty ambiguous and wasn't available for India. So I didn't have a knowledge about that. And since their customer service was not responsive, I had to do a lot of to and fro. So that one month was like hell. And it was very difficult for me to manage my podcast with all of these interactions that I had to do. So after about a month, I switched over to Acast, which is probably a, an excellent decision that I did. I'm loving Acast. I have paid for a yearly plan with Acast and I would recommend Acast even if you are planning to start on a free podcast host because Acast has a free podcast hosting option as well. So you can use that. But if you want to go the premium route, then again, their premium plans are amazing and it includes every feature that you will find out there. So Acast is something that I would recommend. And that switch was extremely easy and their customer support is very responsive and publishing episodes on Acast is pretty easy as well. Now, when I did this switch to a premium podcast host, there were a few things that I learned. First of that is that premium is always better. It offers you a lot more features lot more options and lot more control over how you're publishing your content. So if you're serious about podcasting, then I would recommend that you switch over to a premium podcast host. But then something that you might want to keep in mind is that please try out whatever host you're planning to switch over to. I would recommend going with their monthly plan. Check them out for maybe a couple of months before you commit for the long term. If at all, they have an annual plan. But otherwise, if it's a monthly plan, then I would recommend that you try them out for the first two months. And if you're not happy, then switch over to another host. But try out your podcast hosting company before you actually commit for a long term. Number two, remember that whenever you make a switch from one podcast host to the other, all of your stats is lost, which means that your downloads are going to start from zero. So if you're somebody who's interested in looking at your cumulative downloads, then you're going to lose all of those numbers. You might want to keep screenshots of your download numbers with your previous host if you want to refer to them at a later point. Number three, Premium podcast hosts can help you monetize your show by programmatic ads or giving you options of subscription. Acast gives all of those options, though the income from placing ads might be minuscule because the CPM rates are pretty low. And if your show gets very low downloads, then that amount is not going to be huge. But otherwise, these are some options that are always available with premium podcast hosts. And I think that makes sense if you are looking at podcasting as a long term opportunity. And number four, the best thing about switching to a premium podcast host is that you actually commit to podcasting because you know that you are paying a monthly charge to your podcast host. 
and you know that you have to use that amount that you are uh, spending every month. So that way, what happens is you commit yourself to publishing episodes every week or every twice a week or whatever it is that uh, your podcast frequency is, but it pushes you to go and get that done. So from that perspective, I think you're committed to releasing episodes and premium or paid options is something that forces you to do that. So I would recommend that you switch to a premium paid podcast host if you're serious about podcasting. And finally, in terms of growing your podcast, there were some lessons that I learned across 2022. You know, as podcasters, all of us are focused on growing our audience and we spend a lot of time on listener acquisition. But what we don't realize is that the easiest way to grow your podcast is consistency. If you're able to consistently generate content, release content regularly, if it is a weekly episode every week, if you're publishing two episodes a week, go and publish two episodes a week. If you're able to publish episodes consistently, and that is the biggest and the most effective way of growing your podcast. There isn't anything else that you need to do. Just do your normal promotions on social media, publish your episodes regularly, and I think that will help you grow your podcast pretty easily. The second most important way of growing your podcast was through recommendations. So I used a lot of recommendation CTA on my podcast and I did a lot of promo swaps as well with some of the other podcasters and I found with all of our podcasts, whenever we were doing these promo swaps, there was a sudden uptick in the number of listeners for every subsequent episodes and these listeners were staying with us for the long term. So from that perspective, I think recommendations is the best way to grow your podcast so use a call to action where you are requesting people to recommend your show to their social media circles, to their friends and to their acquaintances. And number two, use promo swaps, reach out to other podcasts who are in a similar download numbers and reach out to them and ask them if they are willing to do a promo swap. So you can publish a short, maybe 30 second promo on their podcast and they can publish a short 30 second promo on your podcast. These kind of promo swaps help a lot in terms of growing your podcast. Go and give it a try. I'm sure it will work wonders for you. So those were some of the lessons that I learned with all of these experiments that I did in 2022. And I'm sure this will help you in your podcasting journey. Go ahead and implement it. And if you have any questions, you can always drop them in the comments below and I will respond to it. So that's all that I had for today. If you're new to this channel, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell notification. And if you liked what you saw today, then please press the thumbs up button because that will help other people discover this video. And if you have any questions around podcasting, you can put them in the comments down there and I will respond to each of those comments either by commenting or maybe creating a video around that. And don't forget to subscribe to the Podcasting University podcast. You'll be able to find all of that links in the description below. Go ahead and listen to those episodes there. That is all that I have for this video. I'll be back again with another video in 2023. Until then, keep watching TPU TV and you all have a wonderful rest of the week.